Hi, welcome to valuationpodcast.com, a podcast and video series about all things related to business and valuation. My name is Melissa Gregg, and I provide valuation and mediation services based in St. Louis, Missouri. Today, we're actually kind of building upon a prior discussion that we had, but we're going to be discussing the pandemic economy and divorce with Josh Schiltz and Patrick Kilbane. Josh's practice is really focused on complex financial matters and disputes. He's a frequent lecturer on forensic accounting topics and has been involved with hundreds of forensic investigations dealing with matters involving personal and business disputes, as well as the identification and mitigation of fraudulent activities. He's also provided expert testimony in commercial and family matters surrounding business valuations, economic damages, fraud, and other Um, disciplines having to do with accounting and economics. He's a forensic valuation expert and offers tax advice in the state of Florida. Pat, on the other hand, is a wealth advisor with nearly a decade of experience in helping clients coordinate their wealth management plans. He's also general counsel for Ullman Wealth Partners. He is the director of Divorce Advisory Group, where he assists, guides, and supports clients before, during, and after they begin the divorce process. He helps high net worth clients make financial decisions at all stages of the divorce process by using his family law experience, uh, his wealth management experience, and his certified divorce financial analyst designation. For a while, people were like, okay, let's just wait and let's get divorced. Like, let's see what six months, we're gonna be out of the pandemic. Okay, a year, we're gonna be out of the pandemic. Okay, 18 months, we're still not out of the pandemic. So now I think people are just deciding to get divorced because they need to get divorced or whatever. So that's fine. That's just continuing. But then when you start to talk about some of the economic factors, we can look back and look at different time periods and say, okay, this is how it affected. Um, But we also have these economic factors that are now influencing business valuations and divorce, but they're influencing the divorce in general. And I wanna kind of put this back to Patrick first, because I wanna, you know, when Josh is talking about an income analysis, that's an income analysis of the person or the people, the spouses and what they can earn and potentially pay alimony or maintenance. And it, it, it correlates to, you know, when we're talking about businesses, we have balance sheets and income statements. And we're, we're talking about a divorce, we're sometimes talking about a personal balance sheet, right? So walk us through a little bit of what you're seeing, maybe economic factors affecting the personal balance sheet and without a business, right? Like, what are we seeing happening? What are some big topics? Yeah, so again, very interesting. I think that there's people, you know, whether it's CapEx or um, any other, you know, sort of um, large cash outlays that they were thinking about doing. I think people are reserved on that, whether, you know, costs of materials are, you know, construction materials, for example. I mean, I have clients that are delaying construction on um, you know second homes, et cetera. I know that that doesn't necessarily relate to divorce. Look, you know one of the blessings about working in the high net worth area is, can't we, Melissa? I really haven't seen many challenges from my clients that walk in my door um, that are having any of these challenges. I, I think you know what I'm seeing is people making arguments about how their income is depressed and. You two are the valuation experts. I'm not, but I, I know enough that sometimes the discovery that I get doesn't support their argument that they've had a, a, a rapidly acquired income deficiency, um, which again is is not uncommon in any economic time in a divorce case. Mm-hmm. I, I want to piggyback off of two things actually. I, I out of what both of you were saying is, I haven't seen an a lot of economic disruption on balance sheets. So to mirror what Pat is saying, when even when I'm looking at a, a business's balance sheet, these businesses, because of the stimulus, it's not like they, uh, I, I, there's few businesses that took a real hit. Restaurants, for example, surprised me. I, I looked at three or four pizza restaurants 
that did better just going with the takeout model. So I do think that <clears throat> this disruption um, led to led to innovation and people rethinking some of their operating expenses. So when I'm doing an analysis and I'm looking at historicals, I'm weary about some of those now. Um, I think professional services uh, operating expenses are changing from what I'm seeing. So worried about that. Um, to, and I think that piggies off of what, Pat, we hear a lot of noise, but what we're seeing is a little bit different. And I'm still hearing noise. And, that, and that's where I'll go. The second thing, though, the valuation date or the date of division, Pat talked about that. That's extremely important. Uh, you know, what we're doing more of now than we did was what I call true ups. So we would do, say, a value of a, 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 of a dissolution um, pre-pandemic. Now we are definitely requesting post-pandemic um, financials to see how the business operated. Was there passive or active um, changes to the business? So there's a little bit of, of that just to check for funny business. But balance sheets are strong. The, the ones that I've seen that were smart, I think that there are examples of people who, I hate to say manipulate because I, you know, I don't know that for certain, but there's Present questions. them in the most positive light. I, I, I just, I question some of the expenses, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it'll be interesting on that standpoint. Um, I think though that what we're talking about and, and the epitome of this podcast is we've talked about the pandemic economy, right? Mm -hmm. Everything that we hear about versus what we're seeing right now is not adding up. What we're seeing is strong balance sheets. So, you know, my question to some business owners in a divorce is why have you been sitting with so much cash on your balance sheet, right? Um, picking up those types of things. So if I do have a client who's a non-owner spouse, I, I want to pick up on those types of things because Pat did hit on a point. There's been a lot of excuses and SIDS, the sudden income deficiency syndrome. Well, and I think that that is a piece of the puzzle. It's like everybody is a little bit concerned still about the economy, yet a lot of businesses are doing very well. You know, there's more business than they can handle. They're more so starting to have um, employee issues. You know, I think that that's been, you know, everybody's been writing about it, that it's hard to hire skilled people. You know, everybody kind of wants to belabor that nobody wants to work and, you know, because of the stimulus. I don't really see that happening. I really see that people, you know, it's been a shift from the employer always had the power, right? We would decide, oh, we see 10 candidates, we're going to pick the best one and, and offer them something competitive. Well, now you're seeing a couple candidates that might not even be that great. And you're going to have to pay them more. You know, so I think it's shifting in that respect. To, I was listening to a podcast that talked about that. And it's called and the guy said, we're rewriting the social doctrine yeah. between employer and employee relationships. So on businesses, we do see some shift in those types of things from the valuation, but there's always change in businesses. I mean, I was listening to Professor Don Doran give a speech, and one of the things he talked about was there's really three cycles that if a business has been around long enough, they're going to go through. Startup, um, stagnancy, and decline, mm -hmm. right? So at some point in time, those things are happening regardless uh, within the valuation. I just think that from a client-based perspective, right? So let's turn this discussion away and let's talk more from like what my clients, there's a lot of concerns. Mm -hmm. um, going back to though, to your question in the valuation world and the spookiness that's going out there with all the talks about the Fed and inflation, there's a lot of talk about equity risk premiums, what's going to happen there, what is a true risk-free rate, right? Because of the bonds that are being purchased at the velocity that they're purchased. 
but those are very technical things that right. you know the clock i think where i'm hearing pat and i would agree with him because we've shared some of those is there's just a lot of concern and so a big part of my job i think more of my job or maybe it's just me putting an emphasis on it in client service is explaining to clients how things change on a time series analysis. 